Welcome to Tools, Tech, and Gear. I'm Seth. Today I have the Rode Wireless Go 2. This is a dual channel wireless microphone to be used with my brand new G7X Mark III. So let's go ahead and open up this box and test this product out. I'm really excited to see how well this works because for the past uh, eight years I have not used a wireless mic. So it should improve my videos significantly. Let's do an unboxing of this product. Whoa. <laughs> Just rip it open. <laughs> oh man. All right. And the contents, we've got a storage bag. Looks like it's a nice Velcro and it's lined with some fleece to keep things from getting scratched up. We have several cables and some information there. Looks like we've got a USB to USB-C. We've got uh, three of those, good. So that can, I guess, charge each one of these at the same time. And then this is your audio jack, 3.5 millimeter, that will go from your camera to the mic itself. And here we go, opening this up. It's got the three little fuzzy dead cats up here. Let's see, don't eat that, it says. And then you've got your, let's see, transmitters and receivers. So these two right here are your transmitters. And this one is your receiver right there. So that's the contents of the package. The transmitters are the same, so I'm gonna move one of them over here. And we can just look up close at the differences between the receiver and the transmitter. So let's go ahead and look at this one first. So on the front, it's got Rode Wireless Go 2. It's got two little lights up here. One is a battery indicator. I'll have to look up to see what the other one is here. The dead cat has a little twist that you can twist it on there like that. And that will hopefully prevent that from coming off. I'll take it off for a second. You have a mic input here if you want to use a lavalier. Over here has got the USB-C for charging and accessing the audio. Down here, you've got your pairing button. Over here, it just has the logo. And on the back, this is a clip for your clothing, but it will also be the perfect size to go into a hot or cold shoe. So for instance, the one here on the Canon G7X Mark III you can just slide that in and it will fit nicely into that little cold shoe. All right, so that is what the transmitter looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this dead cat back on here. Let's see if we can get it to go on there. All right, there we go. And now for the receiver, this one looks very similar in size. On the top, it's got the pairing button on the back, it's got the clip just like the other. Up here though, you've got your DB or your mute. And then you've got your one and two button here. I think it has more options. We'll go through that in just a bit. And then over here, you've got um, your connection to your camera. And then over here is your USB-C for charging as well. And then on the front of this one, there is a display that will show a lot of information that uh, is being sent from the transmitter. Now that we've taken a look at everything, I'm gonna move the charging cables over, move the bag over, move these extra two dead cats and the other transmitter that I'm not gonna be using at the moment. And we will focus on the things that needed for the first test here. So the uh, instruction booklet, when it opens up, is mostly pictures. So let's just follow this here. Uh, it kind of gives you what each button does. And then step one down here, it says we want to uh, go to the receiver and hold down the button for three seconds while holding down the transmitter for three seconds. All right. It has now located number one, and that turned on with this blue light up under here. Let me zoom in so you can see this a bit better. If you look on this display, you can see that the volume meter does move around whenever I'm speaking. If I stop talking, 
it drops back down to zero. So it seems to be recording and doing well. All right, let's go ahead and get this attached to the camera, which is the next step here in the instruction booklet. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the receiver, spin this around, and get it plugged in here on my cold shoe. And then I'm gonna take the included cord, and I'm gonna plug that into uh, the mic down here, which is actually a little bit hard to get to. We'll make it happen. I may have to find a different uh, cable that's not quite so bulky to fit in there. Anyway, that's gonna work. All right, so now we want to plug this other end underneath here to, yeah, not too impressed with the way that is showing up on my camera here. Uh, no way to just set it down. May have to uh, put a little extension out here and maybe turn it up so that it will uh, do that. All right, and the transmitter is gonna go on to my shirt here. Now I've seen people just clip it straight here, but I've also seen people put it inside the shirt. I think I'm gonna try it uh, both ways and see which one I like. So here is inside the shirt. Um, let's see if we wanna do it there or uh, down just a little bit more. All right, there we go. Now, let's go ahead and turn on the G7X Mark III and do a little walk around to see how well this works. And I will also be uh, setting this on a tripod and walking away to see how well this mic picks up as I'm doing my typical videos here around the property. All right, there's some kind of feedback whenever the cable of the receiver is looped around and plugged into the camera. So whenever I stop talking, it comes back. So, but check this out. If I move the uh, road out of the cold shoe and move it away a little bit, it goes away. So there's definitely some kind of issue with the um, receiver being so close to the camera. I'll definitely have to buy a little, um, I guess an extender to go from the cold shoe up to keep that from happening uh, because it's just too close. Now that I've used the Rode Wireless Go 2 for a couple of months, I have narrowed down two different things that help prevent that annoying high-pitched feedback loop that's happening. The first thing is I have moved the receiver away from the camera by buying this little Ulanzi three-way splitter. Uh, it's just a standoff for the cold shoe and getting the receiver away from the camera has helped tremendously. And you can see my cable is now up, which means I can set this down on a surface and it's not in the way. So let me just show you what that looks like real quick. So basically the cable is not bent and it allows the microphone to uh, be away from the camera. Now the next thing you can do, let me actually show you here on my Premiere Pro editing. If I push the spacebar to listen to this now, You can hear that annoying feedback. But if I go over here to my, uh, let's see, effects, type in right, and go down to fill right with left, and just drop that onto your audio, check this out. All right, the first thing you're gonna notice is that there, it's greatly reduced, so definitely do that as well. Now this clip right here did not have the standoff that you uh, just saw right here. And so with that added, and then doing the um, fill right with left, it no longer has that issue with the feedback. All right, let's step outside of my studio and see how well this microphone does out here in the uh, slight wind and just being outside in general. Um, you can probably hear the leaves crunching. It is fall time. So I have spent years I guess uh, since 2013, making videos and uh, have never used one of these wireless mics or even a lapel. So uh, I've had tons of people say over the years that I need to improve my audio. So it's finally time for that to happen. So this is just a basic test of me vlog style talking to the camera to see how well things are gonna do.
I have not changed the settings of my G7X Mark III yet, so it's uh, kind of weird, it may go dark on you. Um, let me turn the camera this way, and it shouldn't make any difference here with the transmitter picking up my voice. And let's go over here to the tripod, and let's do a distance test to see how well this is gonna work if I walk way over there. I just have the road dangling from the cord because whenever it gets too close, that hum appears. Um, definitely gonna have to find some way to remedy that. So this is me at about five feet away from the camera. Everything should be going quite well. This, uh, it's a little bit annoying having it uh, directly on the Adam's apple. So I'm just gonna set it over to the side a little bit and maybe that will be a little bit better. Um, let me know if you can hear much of a difference from direction. I'm probably gonna try and post to, um, I guess, combine the two uh, you know, left and right channels just to play everything equally, so it shouldn't make much of a difference. But, all right, um, let's start walking over this way, and I think maybe I'll go swing on my kid's playset and see how well this picks up from all the way over there. So, and also, uh, if I turn my back and this has to go through me, it may also cut out some. So let's try that as well. So um, if I back up this way, everything should be perfectly the same uh, volume of audio, even though I'm walking away from the camera. At least uh, that's what I'm thinking. So I guess in the past, I may have filmed videos about this far away from the camera. This may be about 25 feet. Um, but honestly, I rarely do anything past this distance. Um, so as long as this right here is working well, I think we'll be good to go. All right, let's try turning away from the camera to see if it has to pass through my body if the uh, audio is still working or not. So anyway, all right, I'm gonna walk over here real quick and keep talking and see if it cuts out. And on the way back, I'll be walking to you and it won't have to go through my body. So uh, I built this swing set and playhouse for my kids and they love the swing set, but have not spent much time on the play place. Um, so I don't know, I guess just kids just do that sometimes. All right, uh, I've turned back to the camera. So hopefully it has a uh, line of sight and should be picking up without any problem. I'm gonna say this is somewhere around uh, maybe 75 feet, not exactly sure. There is a good bit of wind right now and uh, swinging on this should definitely introduce some wind. So here we go. All right, how is it whenever I'm speaking? Because that's a pretty good wind um, blowing onto the dead cat right now. I think in a minute we may take the dead cat off out here. You know what? Let's just do it right now. Let me pull this thing out. I know from the camera you can't see much, but I'm just gonna remove the dead cat here. All right, now it's exposed to all this wind. All right, I'm gonna put that back on. All right, and you're back on. Okay, I'm gonna put it back in my shirt. All right, let's stop this swinging stuff. Cool. I figure that will give us a pretty good test of wind noise. I'm gonna walk over here to the woods, and if it picks up there, that's as far as I'll ever need to be filming and getting audio. So, uh, I've had a cold for the past two weeks. Uh, sometimes I get colds and they just stay. So hopefully you're able to hear this. If not, you'll miss this awesome story about me being sick. I kind of anticipate that there'll be some audio loss due to being um, just having to pass through my body. All right, turning back around now. Should still be able to hear that just fine. I'm gonna guess that's somewhere around, I don't know, 110 feet or so. Um, yeah, I, I don't see that there's any reason I would ever be filming this far away and trying to get audio, but you never know. I'm just gonna continue walking back towards you here. So in real life, I am pretty introverted. And so whenever I make my videos, 
I'm standing out in the woods talking to a black box, basically. So it's, I guess, easier to be more free that way. But whenever I have to be with someone and give a little talk like this, the words just never come to me. All right, well, I think that should give us a pretty good test of the various distances and also some wind noise with and without the dead cat. So, uh, so far, I'm liking the mic system. I definitely will have to find some little extender to get this away from the camera because of that noise. It's been a couple days. I charged up the three different units here. They charged up uh, with no problems. There's a display on that one and then the other two blink when they're charging and they stop blinking when they are done. So I wanna do one last thing here before I close up this video and then I'll come back later when I have more information on these and do a more thorough review. Uh, what I wanna do is just set up one of these kind of far away from where I'm sitting and see how well it picks up um, as I go further and further away from the mic. I have this transmitter turned on, as you can hear. And so right now I'm speaking, you know, a foot away from it and it should be nice and clear. But what if you were doing an interview and the two of you were, I don't know, like three feet apart. So let me see right here. That's about three feet apart. Just wanted to see how loud that was. I anticipate that it should be pretty good because this room is kind of echoey. But hello. Uh oh, you want some cookies? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let me get this kid some cookies. This is the first time I've ever used the Rode Wireless Go, or any kind of wireless mic for that matter, and I am impressed with the quality. So I will learn more about this and be back with a more thorough review after I understand more of its features. But for now, hope you've enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.